Yeah, well, if it I mean, doesn't you, require you the a... time investment for me to be good enough to actually make progress, Hollow Knight. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you, I like well, how yeah, you yeah, only yeah, play games that it. require no skill. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. Show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, me snapping my fingers. No, I'm just messing with you. Um, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin. That's Jordan. That's Pedro, and we've just been hanging out researching uh, toy microwaves in the uh, pre-show. <laughs> I didn't think it was a toy, and neither did you until we read those reviews. Most people apparently did not think it was a toy. <laughs> so many angry reviews. Magical things like that happen, and you can tune in, watch us live on Twitch Saturday night if you get a chance. Gentlemen, um, oh yeah, speaking of live, chat room dynamic. Those lovely people helping us form cocaine Voltron, a very important part of our um not Long's cult breakfast. yes our culty not culty breakfast cultos <laughs> Col <cultios. laughs> totally not a cult Hashtag drink, drink cult. them with Moloch. Moloch. <laughs> what's up what's new anything fun going on man I i've been dealing with uh learning more about like drilling down with the kernel compilation uh optimizations with like the gcc zen optimizations since i have multiple generations of, like zen cpus and seeing like A-B testing, because apparently that's the type of stuff I do for fun these days. Um, maybe necessarily worth it. I don't know. I still got to do some benchmarks on a Jackbox. I want to see how low I can get latency. Like, I, it's kind of a mixed thing. Like, at some point, I'm either going to end up, like, making Jackboxes or my own distribution. And I haven't figured out which one feels more like, uh, you know, a knife to the taint. That's it. That's all I got. That, that, that's, that's all you got? All right. That's all I got. I, Knives to the taint, baby. I, I can't think of any good audio-related knife-tainting puns. Something something tainted kernel modules. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I got one week less left on this fucking calorie restriction thing, so I, my brain ability has gone down, down the toilet. Oh, man. I, I, just, I described it in the pre-pre-super shows and as I feel like one of those wacky, wavy, inflatable arm flailing tube men that doesn't have enough air pumped through them. So I'm just like, Whoa. Oh, that reminds me. I was going to say, um, I did do a live stream. Oh, yes, you did. On Thursday, we put together that uh, $28 test bench. I got it on Amazon because I got tired of looking at it. <laughs> hey, uh, that's not a bad for like $28 if you need a touch test bench that just, hey, it's a test bench. Hard to mess that up. It's solid, well built. There's a video on our uncut channel. If you can find that. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because later that Thursday, you and Empty tested out a Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer, both of you running Linux. How did that yes, go? Yes, that worked pretty well. Um, yeah, the the BG3 has some like weird requirements for multiplayer vis-a-vis -vis, like... Um, okay, all right. Once, once, once a single player game becomes a multiplayer game, you can't turn it back into a single player game. That's what I was going to ask because I saw yeah. like some like prolonged negotiations in our discord before that took place. Yeah. Cause yeah, apparently there, there are a, a bunch of gotchas when it comes to the multiplayer um, where uh, if yeah, where it's, it's basically uh, if you have uh, multiple custom characters in a campaign, then uh, you are stuck with those custom characters and you can't like, so like um, if empty joins my game and I want to carry on with that save, I'm stuck with empty's character. I can't swap it out with a character that isn't his. Um, until until someone else comes back in and uh, and takes control over it, which I, I didn't want to kind of mess up my save that way because I have a bunch of weird romance options going on and I'm trying to figure out how many people I can get to fuck each other and me <laughs> at the same time. This is a very horny game, by the way. Uh, if 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 you're if you are into like dating Sims, Baldur's Gate three, large portion of that game has your back. Let me tell you. Listen, man. Um, um, this is straight up like the fucking Sims with fucking uh, twenty sided die. It and fucking bear fucking man. I found yeah, I no, got actual the bear. genitalia flubbing about. Yes. And my, I, what, I one found, of my favorite things is that uh, the thing you said there is like this is a horny game. Like that, a bunch of horny people are fucking play it. Yes, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, th th listen, D and D geeks are horny as shit, and. This, this game was made for them, so yeah. Um, no, that, that's that's going on pretty well. We might continue that multiplayer uh, save if empties around next week. Otherwise, I'm just picking up, uh, and I'm going to try and have sex with a bear in my save 
<laughs> so stay tuned for that. Have fun with that <laughs> shit, YouTube. Uh, Pedro, you've been tired lately. Yes, I've been very, very tired. In fact, I got tired twice today, repeatedly, by uh, some very burly men over at QuickFit. I just drove my car up there to get two front tires replaced. Not a sponsor. Because Yes. <laughs> uh, see, the, uh, they the, were... the story is a lot less sexy than I was hoping. Yes, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, no, the the front tires of uh, the car that I bought, they were very, very um, out of date already, because yes, uh, tires have a best before date. Uh, and they, like the sidewalls were starting to show some actual damage, so I figured, you know what, let's just replace that before they actually, you know, start falling apart. Uh Next month, I'll replace the uh, the rear tires, too, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I also got a, because the right side rear hinge pin for the parcel shelf is broken, uh, and I got the replacement bit, but in order to get that replacement bit, I need to remove three pieces of trim from the inside of the, uh, the trunk or the boot, whatever you want to call it, before I can get to the bit uh, where that goes. So that's going to be a chore <laughs> to do. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be a project all of its own. Mm. Well, that uh, hopefully you will uh, maim and dismember yourself while um, <laughs> undertaking this. Maybe not. Or, Maybe. Or, or turn yourself into a car. It's about mostly a... plastic. <laughs> yes. Morty, fortunately, Morty, you got to turn into a car. Fortunately, plastic is dull. There's no such thing as sharp plastic. It's awesome, man. You know, just rub yourself with plastic. No cuts, nothing. Coat I, yourself in a thin layer of plastic. I'm It'll kidding, gentlemen. I'm <laughs> kidding. Everybody watching at home, don't do that because that's exactly what happened to our horse. I mean, yeah, the, we were trying to install a spoiler on the horse and then we got a little bit uh, too carried away. It's the steam. Ah, oh, man. Uh, I think Steam that wants again. pricier games, apparently. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, according to uh, the Steamworks uh, news bit, uh, there's been an update to the minimum price threshold that you can set uh, on Steam. If you're a game developer and you have your game on Steam, if your game is currently priced below $5, you need to read this. Uh, the minimum price going forward will be 99 cents US. So, and the uh, minimum that you can discount uh, those 99 cents is 50%, so 49. Uh, the Basically, the limitation is just that, uh, is 99 um, cents the base price or whatever your local uh, currency is for that or uh, 49 while on discount. And, of course, that limits your ability for discounts, and, well, it, it, it Valve is giving you at least all the tools. They're actually giving you, uh, once you go to the prices page for your game on the um, the store backend, it, it'll put little red signs to say, no, you can't price it like that. So... Keep an eye on that. If you have cheapo DLC, minimum is 99C. Now, with anything like this, my first thought is basically any update we get from Valve, especially when it involves money, I'm like, how is this being abused, Jordan? <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's necessarily being abused. You were. You were. Uh, there. There was that whole like um, million dollar game thing that yeah. was going on, but that doesn't <laughs> seem to be a price floor issue. Uh, if you go through the article at the very bottom, they say, well, what if for whatever reason you need to have something cheaper than uh, 50 cents on sale? Well, now they're saying you should check out the Steam Microtransactions API in the Steam item store. So maybe they're just trying to like push people who want to deal with that kind of stuff over onto that side of the business. No, Valve, you were the chosen one. I yeah. mean, yeah, make the game free oh, to God play. Damn, that's and just always put a good thing right there, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm looking to jump into this. One of the first bullet point here is anticipating the fraud. And yeah. I mean, at least they put that front and center, right? Like, it's it's not like the fucking microwave where it's like, oh, yeah, no, this is battery powered and great for children's kitchens in the mice type. That's $80. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, it, it is. Uh, my first thought was because we talked about the million dollar game last week and how much that the price on that came down and how much people were talking about that. And valve is very much the kind of company that doesn't do anything unless there's a significant enough uproar about it. 
which I guess, you know, fair play as AAA publishers go, Valve is the least worst currently. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think I think definitely Valve probably gets a better cut out of like the the microtransaction stuff than just like the raw sales in terms yeah. of. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it makes sense that they would be like, hey, if you want to like nickel and dime people, we have a thing for this. Go go use go use that instead. Right. I mean, ninety nine cents is a it's the right price, right? Like you don't want to go lower than that because then you're going to be dealing with like how much money Valve's going to get out of that from their cut plus transaction fees. Like you're not right. making, you're not making daddy enough cheddar here. Yeah, the, so. the, 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 the chargebacks <laughs> on that are more expensive than the actual purchases, right? right? Like, oh, okay. Now, four K remote play. Now, Jordan, we have an interesting. There's a great video of the first time Jordan and I attempted to use uh, remote play, and by great, you can watch Jordan suffer violently as he's yanking headphones off multiple times and screaming in legitimate pain we were not doing a bit yeah it was not it was not fun no mm -hmm. yeah that, that was the uh that was the um rem yeah rem remote, remote play. play yeah um, remote play but, together <laughs> yeah the re remote play together which is different which is slightly different it's the same tech uh than uh this from this update page yeah this one uh, it comes from the new uh beta it came out on the 14th and uh, the big one was added 4K support, uh, high quality streams for remote play. So, you know, fair enough. But is that really necessary? Because I'm looking yes. at the <laughs> I'm looking at the big picture mode updates and those those are very welcome, like switching from full screen to windowed mode when a full screen video is dismissed. That's been fixed and now stays in full screen like it's supposed to. Uh, the notification yeah, you, Pedro, I'm too busy streaming on my how much up? Five megabit cellular <laughs> connection over my Wi-Fi router. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hear you because the volume from the streamed game has destroyed my eardrums. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> yeah. No. All, as far as uh, as far as remote play stuff goes, I mm, uh, so Val so focus my, on the things you're good at, please. So my thought was, uh, <laughs> there are Samsung smart TVs that do that are UHD that do come with the Steam Link app pre-installed, and this was a thing that they were pushing for a while. So, you know, if you if you are someone who bought that, maybe you want to like be able to stream games from your PC uh to your to your 4K TV using the Samsung things. And I think like that that's that's a reasonable that's a reasonable ask. Theoretically, there is a demand for this feature. So, now, it, it, it it's it's a little strange. I don't think I'm going to like game stream <laughs> from like one PC to another PC, but if you have like a thin client setup then or a Steam Link then sure. But I mean, isn't this for remote play, right? Uh, but it's the it's the same it's the same thing overall, right? Um, uh, it, yeah, in home streaming is just for in your home remote play yeah. lets you do that, but remotely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one thing that, that I ran across when I was digging around in these settings, because let's face it, the three of us we don't fuck around in there. We're like we know it exists. We don't have any use case for it. I saw an option. I don't know how new this is. Maybe this has been there. There's an option for HEVC, which is X two six five buried in there. That's been there for a while. <laughs> is, it, uh, the, is it hardware accelerator? You've though? angered motorcycle guy. How dare you? Room, <laughs> oh, <no>. room. <laughs> no, the uh, the HEVC option. I remember. Uh, 2018? 2019? <laughs> okay, let me rephrase this. Maybe it works now, Mateus. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they 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 also introduced a certain uh, hardware acceleration that. Totally worked on Linux before two oh, weeks ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, I want to go ahead and, because uh, you know what? I saw that in there and I, I saw these updates. And I, I got brave. I enabled hardware acceleration for browsing and it didn't completely nope Steam. Yay. <laughs> Welcome to the No, it, it, it's been fixed now. It actually works. <laughs> I, no, it's been broken for Ven because I've been running it with no problem. There, there, it was a couple weeks ago. You, you were like, Jordan, turn, turn this thing on. Does it cause any problems? No. So... Yeah. I, I, I guess maybe they unfucked it on the 30 series. Yeah, good. Uh, Ampere, uh, now I have more time to sort through game reviews at ProtonDB, and that's just gotten a little bit easier. Uh, you don't know about ProtonDB? That's like the place to go, man. So you should be your first stop to like, should I buy this game? Is it going to run on my Steam Deck? Is it going to run on my Linux box? This is where you go. ProtonDB.com. They've added some filters in here, so there's no more scrolling past deck reports. Yay. Uh, it's now tab submenu. Oh, let's go take a look. Let, let's see what this looks like. 
for our uh, uh, and um, their uh, what's a good game now? to search for? Uh, Jedi popular. Survivor. All yeah. right, <laughs> something with the word bean in it. <laughs> bean, bean done. Oh, it's still that learning about no bean. Roof. No, it has one. <laughs> one game runs smoothly. Bitch me over it. Oh, it's man. almost like it's a Linux game. <laughs> <laughs> How about being battle? Oh, here we go. Here's you know, a popular but, but Spencer's? one. Yeah. <laughs> native. Oh, it's native. We need something with a bean stalker. Not still learning about it. Come on, man. <laughs> Ultimate bean sniper. <laughs> Canonks bean runner. Fairy t- tell the the bean. Oh, uh, man, that, that's you, one you of those hidden object wrong, games. <laughs> you picked the wrong ass noun to search, man. Like, <laughs> all right. What about hammer? Emmerwatch. Emmerwatch is native. God. Heroes of Emmerwatch is native. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, Heroes Dorfs. of Might and Magic. Hammer. Might and Magic. There, there we go. go. There we go. All right. So, uh, verified status, whatever. But look, we got our little tabs all PC. Ta da. Mm. Ah. Steam Deck. Ta da. Hey. Yep. And it, you can done. actually see beyond 40 reports on the Steam Deck now, which is nice. It used to be capped like the, the top 40. That's all you got. But so um, when are we going to see uh, ProtonDB integrated directly into Steam like it should have been two years ago? When Valve decides to buy the uh, fine folks behind it. <laughs> no, it's well, just one yeah, dude doing it. Uh, yeah, no, or, so it's going to be Tim Sweeney who one. buys them out, right? Like like uh, with uh, Steam Charts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it wasn't Steam Charts, it was Steam no. Spy. <laughs> Steam Spy, okay, my bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it would be great since they're expanding the uh, filters and the ability to search for, you know, specific things. Uh, let us filter by GPU or CPU, distro, kernel version, something like that. That, that, that would though, be very though, nice. That would be, that would be <laughs> nice. That would be nice. That would be nice. Uh, but I do want to say this because I've noticed more and more and more. Um, I've caught myself just straight up buying games. I'm like, oh, it's on sale. Let me buy that. Then I'm like, oh, man, I probably should have checked if that... Because <laughs> the... Chances of it not working now? So tiny. Pretty, pretty mm-hmm. low. Like, yeah. it's The co- coverage isn't 100% by any means, but like most of the stuff, most of the stuff you want, you would want to play or try out. It's a yeah, safe and Most of the games is, uh, except for the multiplayer ones that the developers are being deliberately stupid, uh, it's games that use the Windows Media Codex. Which even, even you're then. You yeah, leave the, CSGO the game will developers work. It's alone, just Pedro. A, <laughs> I, I was gonna say I was gonna throw Fat Shark under the bus, where it's like, yeah, we don't know how this proton thing's. Oh, well, we got it working. Sorry, guys. Y- yeah, no, uh, they were th- they were being stupid on purpose. It's like, no, we did the thing that Valve says to do, and it didn't work. Did you? Did you really? Did you push the button? We pushed the button. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> good. It's it's good stuff, man. Lessons learned um that Diggy. is our steam news let's go ahead and get into a couple of game updates because this one we've been waiting on man yeah mm-hmm. d- if are you a dwarf who dig diggy hole well uh you are you can be excited that uh the linux version of dwarf fortress is coming to steam finally well it's already here it's in the beta branch if you in- go into the beta branch you can download it but uh they're also going to be putting out the call for volunteer testers to get this uh fully polished and out the door um also Big hippo. They're adding big animals. So I am more enjoy. impressed by this Gamescom booth, dude. They spent some money. Mm. Like that. Well, they, they, they they put the dwarfs on it, right? They the the dwarfs built the 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 little thing, the pavilion or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, they got a reasonable size booth. I'm giving a little bit of a hard time, but I'm glad they're going to be at Gamescom. And uh, this this has been. Uh, Kind of like a weird, like little, little bit of a curiosity because having a Dwarf Fortress game in existence that didn't run in Linux is just wrong. Yeah, if, like, I mean, if you if you go to the Dwarf War Fortress website, there's there's Linux. Like, I, you're talking get the about Linux like, version. <laughs> you know, you, you like slide into this reality and you see like Dwarf Fortress is only available on Windows. You're like, wrong world. Let's go to the next one. Sli- yeah, sliders. Right. Damn, yeah, damn no, it, Gimli, uh, you, you set the wrong setting. from here. <laughs> Deep Gods, 90s sci-fi. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, nine months. It's been nine months since it's been released, and we all went like, where's the Linux part? There it is. 30 bucks. <laughs> done and done. Now, this next one did a wonderful thing, and I'm kidding. What did it do? It made me angry. <laughs> Crossworn, as we first saw, and we all said collectively, like, that 
Looks a lot like Hollow Knight. Turns out some of the same people from Team Cherry. Yeah, at least one of the people that made Hollow Knight is working on it. I mean, it, it straight up has uh, some baddies from Hollow Knight in it. So it mixes the formula up. It's more gunplay and action-oriented. Boom, boom, shoot around well. Boom, 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 I want you in my room. This latest update. There's a new trailer. Glad to see it. I don't know why it paused when I scrolled. How dare you? Quit trying to be intelligent, YouTube. You're not good at it. They are working on a demo. And uh, I think they... What did they say? That's oh, Hollow Knight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is how it's rocking and rolling. The December 2023 release date has unfortunately been pushed back. Yes, it has. Because uh, if we go over to their Kickstarter... Um, that's some talk on the demo. <laughs> Apparently, they still got a lot and lots of money. And they want to use it all up for the video game, which is a very long-winded way of saying scope creep. Yeah. <laughs> their, 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 their whole quote about like, oh yeah, we got 10 times the funding, so we want to make the game 10 times as bigger. It's like, no, 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 no. You get, that, 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 that doesn't mean shit. It means you get your main goals done. It means you get your stretch goals done. And then if you have any money left, then you can start talking about, hey, maybe we should enhance what we have. Yeah, pay your uh, the the other people working for you. Pay them better. That's how you spend the extra money. That's how you get people happy with what they do. Don't 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 fall pa into Pedro, that trap. Pedro, Pedro, Pedro Mateus is like a person, like friend team of like three people. I mean, still, the three of them can get better I, paychecks. <laughs> abs yes, they, they've already gotten their paycheck when they closed the uh, Kickstarter. Like, or uh, they probably had to get some work done from some external people no yeah, that's how they made <laughs> hollow knight for like well i, I, I two mean bucks on a taco. they all did it themselves this is what happens when you have a competent team that doesn't have to hire third party type shit you know they were able to do the arts they get their parents to do the damn voices like smart move this is how they made hollow knight for nothing man because they were all competent in the industry they didn't have to go out and hire third parties or contractors to do everything these guys were full stack yep, doing the same then, method yeah, and so you, I mean, you you break down that amount of money from Kickstarter. You say that's this is going to be everyone's salary for like however long the development cycle is. Yeah, pump that money up, or yeah, just take take whatever money you have left over, and I don't know, do do a Carmack, buy, go to the Ferrari dealership or whatever. My solution know. for that is you don't fucking touch that money and you leave it there because guess what, the job starts after this thing goes gold and it gets in people's hands, and you find all those billions and billions of fucking bugs and problems yeah. and issues that you didn't know were there until you know hundreds of thousands hopefully hundreds of thousands of people start playing the game yeah that's going to require uh, development time I'll allocate your budget accordingly yeah but budget for the features you need budget for the features <laughs> you promised and then whatever's left over then you can talk about spending that money to go enhance your shit but <laughs> you just got to be smart with it uh you know they, they probably know what the fuck they're doing like shut the fuck up we got this fam don't worry about it um which you know fair enough Fair enough. They also another thing they're going to be working on is the demo, and they have a very uh, drawn out uh, multi pit. No, they, they have a square here to you know tell you about the demo difficulty design. What they're planning on doing is you know with a reasonably short demo, like looking at this graph. If it is to scale, I don't know about that bottom squiggly line. What's going on there with the time scale? Let's jump it around in places, but it's going to be like maybe like twenty percent of a Metroidvania experience, but it's going to hockey stick right at the end. In difficulty, whereas the full game is going to come out, you know, a lot more linear with that difficulty scale. And we had a talk in the pre pre super shows, and go back and listen to that if you're a patron. The uh, challenges of making a Metroidvania demo, right? Mm -hmm. Neither of them had a thought on it. I was talking to myself. No, I, I, no, absolutely not. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, it, 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 I didn't it was suggest great when you, two like, of them or anything. Pedro started <laughs> drooling. It was awesome. You, you pontificated for like 20 minutes and my eyes just rolled into the back of my head. And I was they like, didn't come back and did, uh, did the moonwalk. That's the only way to snap them back. Um, I, lo I love that Michael Jackson dance move, man. <laughs> I want the demo. This, this kind of like made me go girl a little bit because I was hoping this would like be out like right about now. Okay. Let's, let's just go ahead and go back to the real timeline. Silk song should have been out right now. Mm -hmm. Ask Xbox <laughs> when they publicly tweeted. Yes. Every game mentioned during the uh, presentation from last year will be out by summer of this year. And team chair is like, yeah, about that. Um, I know we <laughs> told you that, but so we didn't get silk song i'm like okay at least we got this this is coming out i'm gonna play through this so this is getting pushed back at this point i was like whatever what if they get dropped at the same time <laughs> <laughs> play through 
playing Silk Song. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll play it. this when it's around, when it shows up, just because I know, you know, it's got a good pedigree, the people mm-hmm. working on it. But yeah, I, I want to play Silk Song. Oh, I mean, this is a uh, Hollow Knight with guns, so maybe Pedro will play a little bit of it. I probably <laughs> again yeah. most of my thing nowadays is a uh, tie. <laughs> yeah, well, if I it mean, doesn't you, require you a time a... investment for me to be good enough to actually make progress, Hollow Knight. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you, I well, like how yeah, you yeah, only play games play that it. require no skill. That's <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> I don't you, play anything you, you, that requires you, 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 you me. You heard it here it. first. Yes. Elden Ring requires zero None. skill. Pedro Mateus. Just pick it up. Twenty twenty three. Power through it. It's by far the most accessible of the from software souls likes. Yes. <laughs> All Pedro plays is like no skill boomer shooters these days. On hard, yes. Uh, but <laughs> you're the one that said they don't require skill. I mean, not me. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, Hollow Knight for me was very much uh, a point where I just I kind of lost interest because oh yeah, if I want to get to the place that I want to go, I have to do like the really precise jumps, and I have to do the like the correct timing, like big shooty dash thing uh, at just the right time. It's like nah, I can't be. And Pedro's I'm going like, man, why can't I roll slowly up there? <laughs> <laughs> where's my stamina bar damn it i don't see a bonfire this game's bullshit uh, yeah no benches what's that benches never heard of them. No. uh what else do we got oh yeah we, we, we got, got we got some uh playstation games to talk about yeah right <laughs> yeah because you know we they've been sony's been putting out them playstation games on steam uh, and the latest, one of the latest ones that was Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart, which actually looks really good. I'm, uh, well, if that gets cheap, I'm going to pick that up because I like me some Ratchet and Clank, but we got, we got some bug fixes. We got, we got on the, on the latest version, a uh, crash on startup that could occur on Linux systems or configurations where NVIDIA Streamline is not active. Oh my God. We all actually right, got right. who, who, actual who, Linux, who, not the Steam Deck, actual Linux. Who looked up, uh, <laughs> what the hell a, uh. Linux, uh, I the, yeah, me too. I had fuck all idea. Like, what what it, is, is that some moon feature that I need to cut on to? Yeah, and, um, <laughs> stre- streamline. Yeah, no, no idea. Uh, but, but yeah, no, uh, this, this is, uh, this is pretty nice to see that, uh, they are fixing stuff for, for the Linuxes. Let's be real, they're fixing it for the Steam Deck. They don't give a shit about people. Yeah, for the Linux. NVIDIA powered Steam Decks. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's literally what they're <laughs> fixing. <laughs> I, the Nvidia yeah. Steam Deck. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I still maintain. I do not think they would have. They would have put that out. That fix out if the Steam Deck wasn't in play. If I, st- I still maintain. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. Yep. Die my old man. I'm like whatever. Um, yep. I'm just glad that it happened. It took place. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 wine was the answer all along. That's. Uh, <laughs> Well, we're always going to be going down that, no matter like what version of Proton or Wine. If you've been messing with Wine for the last thirty years, like a lot of us have here, I we were discussing that. Like, you fix one thing, it's going to break another thing. This is perpetual; it's never going to end. But and, and I, I voiced my concerns about like Proton and the Proton approach with Steam. Because, like that is going to be a constant problem. But you know, they do good things, Pedro. Like uh, they all segment Wine uh, Proton versions, right? Anything that's going to be like a super hard break. You can still very much go uh, back to a Proton version if a game works better with that older version. There's a few examples. Uh, Dark Souls 3, it's platinum rated on um, version 316 of Proton. And if you install it, it downloads that and it works just as well now as it did back in the day. Or if I have maybe like a GPU that doesn't support Vulkan the latest. Uh, yeah, the, if it doesn't support Vulcan at all, then you're not going to do well with Proton because, yeah, it's kind of necessary. But yeah, if you have an older GPU that doesn't support the brand newest drivers, but still supports Vulcan, you can stay with Vul- uh, with Proton 7, for example. Uh, because if you want to go with Proton 8 or the new experimental, then you need at least, what is it, uh, NVIDIA driver 515 and Mesa 22 minimum. So if your car doesn't support that, yeah. you're hosed. You can't well, play the Vulcan hosed. games with your retro gaming GPU. <laughs> unless unless you're on Matrox for whatever fucking yeah. reason. Uh, but Matrox no, it, is it, Intel it, it, now. Man. They, they were they, AMD, they, now they're Intel. I thought they were an NVIDIA for a while. I, and, yeah. 
I, I, whatever they I mean, implemented yeah. a lot of nvidia stuff because i remember seeing a screenshot of their control panel on windows and they had like a bunch of physics and other nvidia specific things that you could toggle on and off <laughs> oh dude i saw the post on uh, our pc master race i think earlier it might have been an Nvidia, and it was the a windows screenshot with the post saying i believe uh, the nvidia control panel looks a little bit dated don't you guys agree and i'm like bitch please Get the the fuck out of the Linux one. Yeah, it's like here's yeah. my CRT, motherfucker. My, my, my TFT flat panel. Yeah, right. Four by three, all maybe. four by three, all the way across. Chunks. <laughs> Big looks square. Looks a little outdated. Get out of here. Speaking of things that are old and outdated. Oh yes, a very very old. Uh, well, this one is more about the new games. Uh, Postal Four came out a few months ago, or um, like half a year Last ago, year. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it was a while back, <laughs> but yeah, uh, someone brought up the, um, uh, on X cause it's not Twitter anymore. Uh, it's AMX. Zitter. <laughs> yes. Zitter. Uh, someone asked, uh, asked, uh, running with scissors. Uh, have you ever tried to get the postal franchise on the Epic store? And, uh, running with scissors said not as an exclusive. Absolutely not. The fans on steam are the reason our, why our company is still alive. Those who voted for Greenlight and those who bought the games, so good on them. Uh, but it it in in their case, it's the reverse Epic exclusive because they do say later on in that thread that they're considering um, introducing the game once um, they've worked out a lot of the bugs and everything is sort of kind of working properly. They'll put it on Epic as well, but uh, it's it's the reverse Epic exclusive. Uh, you do the official early access and the unofficial early access both on Steam, and then you put it on Epic. Unle unlike all the Epic exclusives that do it the other way around, <laughs> which is great. We get a game a year late that um, most of the bugs have been worked out. I kind of like how they rocked and rolled with this, though. I mean, like, <laughs> they, they understand where that bread is uh, covered with uh, bite-sized Snickers. They do. They do. I mean, you know, dance with the ones, you know, Roger, baby. No. One thing I do like, though, running with scissors, uh, is this is all in a response to a post where they said, hey, you know, they, we've been told our games are too expensive in certain countries. We've been using what Steam says, so hey, don't don't shoot us. Followed by, if our games are too expensive for you, you can pirate them until you have enough to support us. It's a solid position. That's very good. We can't hear Jordan because <laughs> he's halfway across this fucking room. Well, I said it's a solid position. There we go. Um... <laughs> Good to see, good to see. But I will say, uh, despite reports from uh, news outlets who like to say things are coming to Linux before it has been confirmed, uh, based solely on rumor, we're still waiting for that Postal 4 Linux board. It has yet to materialize. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that covers Linux gaming without, well, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, don't you know, Reddit. Metro Last Light and Metro 2033 came out on the exact day that the announcement was made that they would be coming well that same thing with portal one and two came out on the same day on Linux. <laughs> yeah <sighs> okay so what else do we have next I oh we that have that for the, the uh, news. The the news. news yeah we got regular news <laughs> all right uh, uh is this starting new? Right. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's it's news to someone. Lenovo it's checks. continued coverage. <laughs> yeah, our ongoing so, saga of like something other than a Steam Deck, please. Yes, this this one might actually be up Ben's alley, honestly. Uh, yeah, so this is the first look from WindowsReport.com. Yeah, I have weird source. All the links in our show notes. Um, but the Lenovo Legion Go, uh, we finally get a first look at it. It's a bit of a chunky boy, and it turns out that that's because it has quite a few removable parts. Uh, including the Joy-Cons on the side, a la the Nintendo Switch. Although, I don't think they thought that one through, because, like, the way the Switch does it... Ooh, here is... comes the official photos. Let's go, let's ah, go. Ah, drum roll, it, please. It looks like a Switch. It looks like a Switch, yep. With a t There's a little touchpad at the bottom. Uh, oh, and... they're trying to piss everybody off here, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But, so, like, here, here's the thing about the removable controllers, though, is, yeah, the, the Switch controllers, each Joy-Con has the same number of buttons on each side. That is not the case with the with the Joy-Cons of the Lenovo Legion like, Go. I give so, a fuck, because I got a kickstand. Kickstand. The whole point. <laughs> argument the whole invalid point buttons is on the to back. Have two controllers, so you can do multiplayer games on the go. This is not that. I guess you can, like... Oh man, remember that the the split in half controller that we were looking at that thought that looked really cool, but then uh -huh. they never actually made them. Mm -hmm. It's basically kind of like this. 
Uh, it's going to be running the same kind of hardware that the uh, ROG Ally is going to be running with the new uh, Zen 4 shit. Uh, still running Windows 11, so enjoy whatever crappy front-end Lenovo slaps on top of it. If you have used Lenovo's Windows version, you know all of, you know the, the the joy of all their additional add-on software that totally doesn't spy on you and slow your computer down to a fucking crawl. And the root kit that they have in the BIOS, uh, remember what was it, uh, Scuttlefish or whatever the thing was oh, called? Oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 or the SSL <laughs> interceptor that like ran yep. all your traffic through their proxy Man in the and middle. like, yep. God um, damn it, Lenovo. <laughs> now yeah. to in, in, in Le, Lenovo's defense, the, that was only on the peasants laptops <laughs> Not, we can't fuck up the think pads that's, that's where the that's it where was admittedly is. it was a yoga idea pad but still it wasn't exactly a cheap laptop <laughs> now what do you really have here for uh what, what we have here is you, you gotta think lenovo so you're gonna stick with what we're good at it's an x86 super fish oh. miniature <laughs> laptop with breakaway controllers and no fucking keyboards what they made Mm -hmm. Although, um, what 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 I thought could be interesting. You you said you want a Steam Brick. This can kind of surface that, right? If you just pop the controllers off and you just have it as like the little all-in-one display with like a like a Type C dongle hanging out the back of it. Yeah, you can kind of use this as a Steam Brick. You're probably good, but like at this point, you want I, I want Steam Brick too. At this point, like, mm. and you know, then to what you were saying, this is better. This is. This is why it was such a tough nut to crack, and Valve did it with the Steam Deck. It's not specs, man. This has already been proven, because we, we've had the Asus, and everything. everybody everybody wants some of that Steam Deck. They, 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 they just want a little taste of it. They just want to rub up next to that Steam Deck. You gotta have the operating system for it. Because mobile gaming, no matter how good your hardware is, is dog shit on Windows. It's not a good experience, and everybody has like their own custom overlay. Their own, they're like, oh, we're going to take a crack at this. We'll get it right. No, you won't. Not overnight. Steam barely got it right. And they've been trying at it for like a decade now. Right. And it's uh, part of B loves the irony of, uh, oh, yeah, no, as it turns out, the Linux games console uh, has the better UI and the better compatibility when it comes to gaming on the go than the fucking Windows console does. <laughs> now, in, in their defense, Valve could probably buy <laughs> Lenovo. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't fucking know. But more importantly, it's got a kickstand, so all of our arguments are invalid because every, <laughs> yeah. every handheld should have that built into it. Period. So you what can I, do What I need to see mode. is the price. The the because we yes, we've been getting the pictures and we can see that Nintendo's gonna sue somebody on this one. Mm -hmm. But um what about the price? Uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna, I, I, gonna I mean, uh, charge money for it. The, those, the, yes. I mean, the, those refurb Steam decks are like a crazy good deal, right? Have they come yeah. back in stock? Those yet? are very to hard check? to. The, uh, uh, I, we, we need to add that as part of the uh, Steam Linux. The two five the six was back in stock during the week. I don't know now. It's the weekend, so probably already gone. <laughs> Let's go check our memory hole, aka LinuxGameCast.com. This old deck is the story. Ah, uh, okay. So under and over. What's what's in stock? What? It's out of stock. The no 512 cheating. is in stock. Uh, 512 yeah. is going to be in stock. <laughs> 512 yeah. is in stock. So we're going to say completely out on 256 and 64? Yeah, I think yeah, I think probably. there's no more 64s. All right. Because 64s uh, are just gone. <laughs> okay. So the expensive one, obviously, yeah, is that, that shit's all sold out too, son. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. They're Whoa. all gone. Okay. Goddamn. Well, it picked clean. <laughs> I, but like, uh, again, fantastic deal you're competing with this lenovo and yes. Leno lenovo isn't really known for like low but budget systems right like well i mean they the inherited are stupidly expensive. <laughs> i mean what do you think about lenovo before they got they purchased the uh thinkpad mm -hmm. line of stuff you didn't really think quality and all that and since they bought it you still don't really think quality and all that you go man i remember when thinkpads were built like tanks yeah they're they're you they're, can they're, see they're, it they're, yeah <laughs> They're 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 not they're not the worst things these days, but like they've fallen quite far from what the, from their their glory days. You you can visually identify um the, like yeah, the old ThinkPads. IBM ThinkPad yeah. versus because you know, outside of it just being thicker, I'm talking about like just feel like just just let me rub my pinky toe over it and I'll tell you who made it right. So mm. let, let me give it a sniff. Mmm, tastes just <laughs> like raisins, baby. Now 
Another type of gaming portable, and this is something that uh, I have a serious question because uh, we'll get a poor one out for something that I feel that never really happened. Yeah, it, it, it was always something that existed on the horizon, but no one really ever tried to capitalize on it. Gaming Chromebooks is what we're talking about. So uh, this comes from Ars Technica. Uh, apparently, there was some industry scuttlebutt earlier in the year about some Chromebooks being produced with integrated 4050s on the board. Right, right. And is it just me? It was like all the fucking proportions for this guy's hands wrong in that controller. At least it's not like an AI like hand wee where it's little all baby, like his million, hands, million the, fingers. Look, yeah. to, to his headphones, to his hands, to the wall. Or it's just a really big controller. <laughs> There's yeah. just a, no, no. Oh no, that's wrong. Like that, that tells all, everything in my brain's like that, that is that, badly done. That looks that looks like a fake ass controller you find at an IKEA or something. But yeah, um, so the more industry scuttlebutt is saying that those boards have been quietly axed, and so there will be no Chromebooks that have integrated uh, NVIDIA GPUs going forward. Now, most of Chrome OS's gaming prospects were cloud based back when state back when we. B dreamed that Stadia could have possibly been a thing before that fart evaporated. Uh, there was stuff focused on GeForce Now, Xbox game streaming, but like game local gaming on Chrome OS is basically local gaming on Linux. In fact, I would say that local gaming on Linux is probably a better experience than local gaming on Chrome OS because you actually have storage and a video card and a decent processor that can run said games. I would and argue that local gaming you, on your Android device is better than Chrome OS. Yeah, even if you have like the same exact hardware, comparatively speaking, uh, running Steam for Linux on Chrome OS, you're running it via the... Crouton yeah. container, yeah, the Crouton container uh, virtualization well, well, and thing. Well, th th there was there was talk of Borealis, right? Like they were going to have a native Steam client for Chrome OS, which right. still hasn't materialized. materialized. It, I mean, yeah. it hasn't shown up, and like then we're going to lose. But I mean, come on, come on, can we all just agree? Like when we first started, like, oh yeah, we're going to get discrete GPUs and a fucking Chromebook. Everyone went why? I mean, I, I, I was I was cautiously optimistic. I would love to see Google try to like muscle into like Windows's share as like a desktop right, OS. Right, right, right. That, 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 that would be that would be fun. Here's the thing. When I discrete GPUs. APUs. Give me something with Alchemist built on an Intel chip. Give me something with whatever uh, AMD's got in the same deck. RDNA three. Like, something proper with RDNA. This RDNA3. makes sense. A discrete <laughs> GPU solution in a mother and Chromebook does not make the sense. Especially for like the power envelope that they're supposed to inhabit, right? right? Like these 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 are laptops that are supposed to last for like what eight hours, and yeah, also the, the price the, point because some people are genuinely curious how come they're a ninety five dollar Chromebook and not do ten eighty p sixty gaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though well, it doesn't you need have to pay for the, you you would need to pay for the good Stadia subscription for that. Mm. Not anymore. And the, the the Chromebook Pixel, I suppose, like the the old four by three or three by two thousand one. dollar Chromebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At that point, just buy a fucking laptop, right? Like, <laughs> you know, if you see somebody with one of those, or you see a thousand dollar Chromebook, you got questions that you're just not going to ask out of politeness. Even yeah, I, Dell, I, I, I Dell made one of those with a proper i seven, uh, like full on laptop i7 with the uh x uh yeah xz graphics that's the type uh, of present you buy people that you just straight up don't like man but you gotta get them a fucking gift and you want to piss them off and you don't <laughs> and give you, them a receipt you, you got a thousand dollars to burn you're just like yeah i'll inflict this on yeah, someone they're like here you go <sighs> i don't know why but they made them uh, <laughs> i would it, go it was gonna be the next big thing then uh you know i like the idea of you know it's like chrome os was probably a lot of people's first experience with like immutable uh mm -hmm. machines mm -hmm. which yeah. I, 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 okay. I was just gonna say, and, and again i i would have loved to see like Chrome OS just take a take a big old bite out of the that laptop Windows market share. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of people who buy Windows laptops don't actually need laptops. They just need like something to run Google Docs. Well, I mean, it definitely has like, you know, anybody like university uh, in the K-12 school systems, I know in the States, because like mm -hmm. I see that on our tech core all the time is like the people who have to deal with the fucking kids uh, Chromebooks are like, ew. <laughs> Sticky. So I spilled my juice box. So uh, educators, uh, don't worry. They, you're not going to have to worry about uh, discrete graphics on your Chromebook. I'm sure somebody will probably like make one or two. But you know, Steam on a Chromebook seemed like a weird idea in the first place. And let, let's face it, Valve probably forgot they were working on it anyway. Oh. 
<laughs> the one person that was just wheeled their desk off somewhere else. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, see, see, you need. To, that's the problem with Valve. Like that project got too stale, and if you want to get mm -hmm. a raise, you need to start a hot new project. So turf that shit and start on something cool. Gotta burn it, man. Gotta get up there. No, uh, this is a dumb name, Pedro. For Ultra Ram, said Ultra the uh, dyslexic uh, 4K Ultramarine. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, it's Ultra Ram. It's the hot new thing. You may have seen the article uh, being shared all over the internet. Ah, uh, they uh, fucked up. They should have called it somewhat efficient memory. <laughs> yeah, because 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 we're because we're not getting LK ninety nine. We need something else to be excited yeah, about. Yeah, we'll get to the uh, efficiency in a bit. But yeah, it is uh, the uh, article on PC Gamer says that you could hibernate your PC playing a game for over a thousand years. And yes, uh, hibernation or S five in the SCPI table uh, is when your machine writes uh, everything that's in RAM to local storage. And what this basically is purporting to do uh, is effectively create a faster, bigger cache module like SSDs currently already have. Uh, it just specifically dedicated for storing. Um, God damn it, Pedro. Now I got that punk stuck in my head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> basically, uh, to add. Uh, an extra bit like the DRAM currently does on existing SSDs to add that extra bit of cache that you could say dump everything you have currently running in RAM and hibernate and keep everything there with minimal power usage because it's effectively local flash cache module that uh, would work it. Now, they do describe it as um, non-volatile quanti <laughs> quantum resonance tunneled uh flash memory which i don't entirely know what that means and it wouldn't surprise me if the people who came up with that term uh did either so <laughs> but the whole thing about ultra ram is it promises to fill both functions performance level with dram mm -hmm. but it's non-volatile and i think that's interesting you know if you want to just get rid of dram like completely let's just get rid of that and replace it with something that the power goes out you go and you're not worried about it. Uh, however, however, you do need to install a thermonuclear reactor of sorts in order because this is in their fucking PDF. This is what Ultra RAM looks like. Just you click that right on. That's what the module is. Get a couple of little cables. Uh, that, 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 that's the dim. Yeah, it's no, I mean it, 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 it's it's got a it's got a th ultra thin uh, ribbon for it though, so it's not too inconvenient. It'll plug right into your case, and uh, that that's in their PDF, man. I didn't make that up. But you got to think about this. You got to dial it way, way back to the days of SGI. They had a thing called UMA, Unified Memory Architecture, that they developed back in the 90s um, with the O2. And that was used a little bit different uh, situation because that was like system memory and GPU memory. And that's what those boxes were known for, 3D rendering. And they had just spectacular abilities compared to anything that you were seeing in the x86 world. We were still munching on I380, you know, well, I, real 386 glue sticks at the time. Um, but one thing I don't see mentioned anywhere by them in their press release is speed, because this is the big deal. If you ever want a RAM replacement, because Intel has kind of tried this a little bit with the yeah. Optane RAM. Crosspoint, yeah. The mm -hmm. Optane RAM modules. Uh, they were originally called X-Point, but everybody, the, the productized name was Optane. And um, the problem with Optane, it was fast. It wasn't too bad. And you can get little memory modules, pop it in, you know, swap it out with your DRAM. They can only do about 1.4 gigabytes a second. And yeah. when you think about the speed of not necessarily fast DDR RAM, we're talking like DDR2133, it, it, it can squeeze out just a little bit more than that 1.4. Uh, it can do about 17 gigabytes a second. So if this can be closer to, I don't know, if this, if this does 10, I'm like, I'm curious. Yeah, I, I too, because like I, I too remember the big promises of Crosspoint, right? Like there was, oh, you you don't have to, we, we can just like image your memory and you never have mm -hmm. to worry about like power outages and instant boots and stuff like that. And uh, uh, again, nothing really ever came of it. We did, we it just became like an accelerator, an additional cache if you have like platter disks. That was ultimately all it was good for. Um, 
So if like this can materialize and as, as Ven alluded to, if this can operate at like a decent enough speed, it would be really cool if folks start using it. It would be real cool if personal, if like personal computing as like a paradigm get shifted because no longer you need to, there's like no longer a separation between storage and memory. It's just this. So what, 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 what does that mean for like PC architectures moving forward? <laughs> it means that you got to rewrite all your operating systems because yeah, your, yeah. your computer's always on, right? Um, low power is... The speed is the big one because, yes, you already have faster RAM that you would get even on an x86 PC. On another x86 PC, if you look at the consoles, how, how the consoles handle memory and Laughs in GDDR6. Yes, uh, they all use GDDR6 for both the graphics memory and for the system memory. The problem with that is that it's still volatile. It's still RAM. So uh, HBM's have- expensive, yo. Yeah, you have to find a way to get it to be non-volatile. And I'm not sure throwing quantum resonance tunneling at it is a good idea. <laughs> what the fuck did quantum it's, it's, resonance tunneling ever do to you, man? Like, <laughs> didn't, didn't that bring all like the aliens from Zen over to Earth or something? No, that was a resonance cascade. Close mm. enough. That, that resonance cascade <laughs> failure. That's what that was. <laughs> this, I mean, this is what we want, though. Like, we, you know, we don't want to worry about, like, okay, you know, we just get rid of NVMEs, we just get rid of SSDs, and we just, you know, put a couple of petabytes of ultra RAM into the motherboard, which doesn't, you know, it might have some legacy NVMe slot on it, you know, for backwards compatibility for your retro game collection. For, for, for the mass storage, right? Like, yeah, but get, I mean, this is... a big SSD. Because when we come up with, like, unified memory architecture, there is another company that is currently doing it today. And I didn't put it in the show notes. Apple. Mm. The M series. Yeah, they do have their own yeah. architecture, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, this is going to be, like, some heavy lifting. And even, like, to speak of the Optane, like, memory modules, because I was a little, I did a bit of research into those. Intel only. Intel, Intel, the Intel out of it. Mm. It only worked on Intel boards, and you had to do very, very particular crap, even on Linux and on Windows, to make it work in any type of semi-functional way. So I understand why that never took off, but yeah, proprietary. Maybe, maybe. Like, like like I said, we're not getting any LK99. We need something else to be excited yeah. about. I want to be excited about this, because like, I don't know. If... <laughs> mm, think about it. Like This can be a I, this is why I desperately want to know what they're like. We're just getting this off the ground. This works in a lab effectively, and they were hush hush on the speed because I'm assuming they're like, well, it'll get faster over time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. What if we get 10, 17, 15 gigabyte a second, like flash drives? That'll be dope as hell. Right? That, that, that'd that be pretty cool. Yeah. Although, uh, even the promises of the PlayStation 5 super fast 25 It's going to be the first motherfucker to try to read zero that. <laughs> oh, you know someone's going to get it running on a Raspberry Pi. Okay. Um, <laughs> think about SBC, though, man. Shit. Mm-hmm. We're thinking of, we're over here in x86 land. You think about a Raspberry Pi with, like, I don't know, 20 terabytes of. Uh, yeah, like unified memory, memory. storage. Uh, no, you know, you know, you know who's like. Mm-hmm. LLMs, Tra- yep, yep, all all that RAM. Yeah, keep keep that keep that all in memory. Don't can access yep. that at all times. Yeah, it's mm. in, inter- interesting times. Interesting times. May we live in them. Um, OBS. Yeah, yeah. Some people have heard of OBS. We're using OBS right now. You might not know. Yeah, on <gasps> Linux. Oh, it is Ooh, possible, kids. Uh, I. Sh- Dude, I've seen some convoluted people still use like a uh, vid blaster and uh vidcast and like these totem be- totem. That's a player. Okay, fair. Listen, he's trying. He's trying. You don't. I, 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 I was just trying to shit on the, the guy who's like, I can't maintain totem anymore. That was, that, that was it. That, that, that then was again, my uh, you're not shitting on him. I, they I question fucking, the existence you're, you're, of totem on, when uh, VLC is a thing. His employer so. going, you don't get to work on that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go i personally would decide yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. all right this is what, this is what I, I, i'm more shitting on the existence of totem let's be real I, yes i i yeah take use <laughs> mpv like a normal person uh so obs it's got a new version out but it's beta beta one actually there's a beta two right now because you know there's always the oopsie there's a gaping memory hole and uh, a bunch of new things have been added to this Two of the big ones that I saw that stood out uh, here on Linux, you can finally get QSV support. Peter, what's QSV? 
Tell me about it. I have no idea. It's some Intel it's thing. Quick sync video? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you you wrote an article about that, Pedro. I edited it. God damn it. Actually, uh, it was a review, and uh, I specifically mentioned that it was a pain in the butt to actually get it set up, at least back in the, the day. The, I don't the, know the, if that's this changed. Non, this, non, this non-article review of yours? Okay, okay, okay. all right, check this out, check this out. <laughs> On top of that, though, uh, YouTube Live Control Panel, which apparently I can, don't know, maybe it's in the flatback version, but I couldn't, I compiled it, didn't happen. Here's something that's interesting, though, that I, I think we can all like uh, get a, a bit of a chortle out of. They've added a shader cache to improve OBS startup time on Windows. <laughs> oh, so they get to compile shaders now. Yeah, Yay! Right? <laughs> right? Oh, oh, here's something I didn't want to point out, though. Full height docs. So you might not know, you can do docs, and one very easy way of getting your chat up and running is to set up a custom browser doc. And previously, you couldn't, you had to, like, pop it out. You had to pop it out of the interface if you wanted to stretch it out. Now you can just have a full-size top-to-bottom doc. So you can have chat or anything that you need that's going to be long. Giggity. That's what a long chat looks like. Just a long, long yeah. chat. <laughs> also, uh, it seems that uh, QSV is a recent development for QuickSync because uh, it was always just called QuickSync. <laughs> yeah, you gotta make it. You gotta make it cooler and more abbreviated for the kids. I don't know, man. Like uh, <laughs> Intel QuickSync video. Yeah. Oh, it works on uh, Linux now with OBS. Yay. Neat. If you got yeah, an art card, no, that's good. No, it's more yeah. hardware encoding support is always good. But actually, yeah, shit, no, if you have an art card, send us some hate mail. See if this works. Tell us how it works on uh, on yeah. Intel Arc. <laughs> very yeah. good. We're all, I think we're all very curious about that. I, I've kind of given up. I, like I was, I got tired of the stock market. That is the price of the A770. <laughs> Too many times, man, because I don't know about you. When, when I go to fucking buy something, it's like, okay, there's the step one's like, okay, like, okay, like step 13's put it in the cart. But there's the other step is like, wait a day or some shit while you deal with this fucking. Check, check the reviews, check reviews. Think about it. Sites. Like, do I really yeah. fucking need this? Tomorrow I'm going to fall off tomorrow. Can I really spend the money? And to come back and like see it is like, oh, right, 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 right. It was uh, 310. Today it's 380. You're like, Tune in next week. I'm like, get, get the fuck out of here. Acer. Looking at you, Acer. Weird by frog. Stupid by fan. Weird <laughs> fan yeah, face. Two completely different fans, just because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I mean, so, sometimes one fan is more available than the other, and that's why the price has to go up. I guess. <laughs> Maybe you want to write into the show and tell us why all fans are equal. Don't, don't judge a fan by its cover. Her size. Oh, it's or not color. the it's the motion of the fan ocean motion. <laughs> the lotion of the motion of your fan. Moral of the story you need to rise an hour early just don't like let your fans dry time. out. You need to moisturize your fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sprinkle your fans. Some of you right now are like, I've never put any lotion on my <laughs> GPU fans. You gotta, you gotta you gotta put some glitter on them to to fancy them up a bit. Mm-hmm. Well, you're gonna, don't fucking obviously. listen to Jordan. You're gonna end up destroying your <laughs> GPU feds. Use toner. Mm, yes. Um, fa fair enough. Fair how, enough. How can they get in contact yeah. with us, Pedro? But yes, uh, the best way to get in touch with us is to throw toner in the wind and hope that it spells out a message that we can rend. Uh, rend? Read. Rend. Uh, <laughs> Read and win at the same time just came out as rind. But no, the best way to get in touch is to go to loisgamecast.com. You hit the contact button and you fill out the form that's at the bottom of the page. It's at the bottom of the page because the top of the page has some warnings. Well, one warning and one that's totally a warning, but it doesn't say warning, so it's not doesn't count. Uh, and some other caveats that you should absolutely read. So that's. Are, are we clear? No, because I'm, I'm not. How hard is it going to be to make a fucking blink gif of that where it says not a warning on each side? <laughs> Hashtag not a warning. I'm going to be the well, god of warning. Well, boy. Yeah. That's not a warning, Kratos. boy. Kratos. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we, we, got, we got one bit of hate mail from, from Chibzy What's here. What's the backstory in this one, Jordan? Uh, this one we were asking about uh, Archus and why one would like a rolling release distros. 
Uh, and so Chibzy writes in, he's a Patreon, we love him. He says, hello, Shadizens. Been a while, hope all is well. Caught LGC 573 and the Manjaro Hatons. I've been running <laughs> Manjaro for, wow, a, quite a few years now, and it's been super stable, more so than any other distro I ran while hopping around trying to find a good balance for myself. Rolling release means I'm very up to date. It rarely break, really breaks three times in a year and maybe six years, and two of those were due to the NVIDIA blob crap. Move wood, I don't know what that is, has been excellent. Manjaro hardware detection. Often setting up hardware that I've had to compile <laughs> myself on other distros. I'll admit to occasional updates that don't succeed, but if it doesn't break the app, uh, you can usually skip that update package, wait a week or two for the Arch folks to figure it out, and then it gets fixed. When Use AOR when I have to. The R is okay. Any to send bzz, Spotify, Zoom, and a handful of others, but it's more likely to fail to update than any compiled Manjaro packages. Not having to compile most things is kind of nice. Updates are quick, except for the AUR stuff. I wouldn't say it's the most new bready distro, but if you know a couple things and can read an Arch Forum post without your brain exploding, it's a very nice experience. Love, Chibsy. Yeah, and like I said, Arch is for noobs. <laughs> I have first-hand experience with uh, Manjaro on the Pine Book, and uh, I can tell you for a fact that shit breaks every three months. I mean, in, all, so. in, in Arch's defense, it's a fucking pine book. <laughs> yeah. Well, God damn, Pedro, yeah, you're right. Yeah, right out of the gate, you got me defending a pine book. I mean. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not like the, 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 the peak of hardware support. This shit doesn't in, work in on my TI-85. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's the thing. It's you ever try to run Arch on your RK Dreamcast, man? It's a horrible experience. It's an RK-3399. If it's not a Raspberry Pi, probably the thing that has the most support is a fucking rock chip. Just imagine like a PDP-11 just making some high pitch wine. It sounds like a <laughs> scream. <laughs> Catching fire sparks. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it's it's questionable. <laughs> I, I I I mean like what 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 I what I find interesting about this result is like normally the the AUR gets promoted as like oh it's one of the best parts of Arch. You have all the software available. But here, from from a practical standpoint, it's like, yeah, all of it's built one time, and then it's not updated, so you're better off like building it yourself or using the officially compiled Manjaro packages or Arch packages, whatever. Like that that that, that kind of that's kind of a knife in the back of the AUR in terms of like a selling point. Well, I mean, I uh, here's what I say. This is why when, when I say Arch is good for new users, I I'm not fucking with anybody when I say that. Why? Because I think it's good for new users because, yeah, even Chibzy saying it only breaks, you know, a couple of times a year. Yeah, that, that's, that's like saying it's a good gun to cancer. But <laughs> such is the danger of any rolling release. It doesn't matter if it's harsh. It doesn't matter if you're running Debian testing. Shit Probably can still happen. Rawhide. Yeah. Rawhide. Any of that. It, shit happens like that. I mean, you got to be prepared for it. And um, But Arch has a great knowledge base. So when that shit does break, you're able to head over to the wiki, look through it, get some new ideas. Now, one thing I really wish uh, Arch pushed a little more, or some way to to teach people how to download shit and compile it. Because when you when you have that candy store, which is the AUR, you're not incentivized. You've I've never seen somebody come to a screeching halt of like, so what do I got to do here? You're going to have to compile this custom kernel. Deer headlight, man. Like, <laughs> the fuck are you even talking you, what like you don't know how to build something like no like do you have that installed what i i think i think it's i think that that's a little tricky because like i th i think you can have like good support there for like cmake or ninja based projects but like some some projects have some weird ass fucking build systems that like how often are do not you run into something outside of like cmake maybe waft uh what else we got what else we got pedro Mason, Mason, Ninja, Mason, Ninja. <laughs> I think we're done, really. I, I, I mean, that, that that's the ones you run into for the most part until scones, 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 scones. Yeah, yeah scones, scones. Are still around. I haven't on, seen occasionally, scones there's the uh, auto Python <laughs> installer uh, ones. Uh, auto, auto conf is still a big one. The configure make install. Yeah, but that shit works, man. <laughs> oh yeah, well no, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying like that's we're, if we're making a list, right? Uh but yeah, some sometimes you get some like weird ass build systems. I. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, I think I think it's it's more like a, a suite of skills that need to be cultivated rather than like I can just teach you how to compile software from source. There's there's a lot of trial and error I there. I teach people how to compile shit from source on the reg, man. Like that is like it's it's very you, you, you easy. You teach to people do. to compile one thing from source, not all software from source. Yeah, right? my like, goal is not to teach try. somebody how to install all fucking software from source, but you got to start somewhere, and you're going to start that with a project doing one thing, preferably something that you want to get done, and it's a great introduction. That's how you learn yeah, these I'm, things. Like step sure. one. I'm, I'm just saying, like, the, uh, any any initiative like that would need to be pretty narrowly focused. That's it. That's what you do. Like, that's what I do. Yeah. Like, here's the thing. Here's how I'm to build very, it. Very Follow aggressively agreeing with each other. Yeah. No, you've both been arguing for the exact same point. So, you know, carry on. <laughs> yeah. Very, very aggressively agreeing with each other. You, you, you know how it is. So, yeah. <laughs> People need to learn how to build shit from source, as Jordan was saying. Period. It's useful. Yeah. Like, don't fight it. You know. No screams, only dreams. <laughs> Pedro would say people shouldn't have to know how to compile stuff from source in order to run Linux, though. Yes, I will. <laughs> uh, I think that in if uh, desktop distros and the current development of desktop distros has proven anything, is that the more focus we have on the GUI, Steam OS, uh, the more people will enjoy it. The more people will buy it. There's in what a year and a half of the Steam Deck being out is already almost half of the uh, Linux um, desktops on Steam. So yeah, that that. Thank that's you, handheld doing... gamers who have never owned a Linux machine <laughs> in their life and have no interest in learning about Linux whatsoever, as long as it plays their video games. That's I mean, the thing. It things. plays the video games, and they have a desktop mode, and occasionally there's well, the, the uh, adventurous one that yeah. goes and has a look. Or you it's like, dealer. oh, I have all of these games on the Epic Store. How do I get that working on the Steam Deck? It Yes, it absolutely should be a requirement nowadays to have an option not to use the GUI. Uh, not to use the yes, line. thank you, Pedro. That I knew you, you can agree use with me. the GUI. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and, and, Freudian and, 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 slip I, there, buddy. <laughs> I'm just gonna be in the in the middle position. The best thing about Linux is it's that girl that does you both. If you want that custom environment, you can get it. If you want something like R or FlatHub to just deliver the software to you with a nice little GUI, you can have it. And we can all we can all just like coexist in a happy little picnic, happy smile, fun times. Get the fuck out of here with your immutable bullshit. <laughs> you, can you can't, you can't, you can't mute me, man. I'm immutable. <laughs> Power wash. Uh. <laughs> Try and like I'll be Agent, Agent Smith, my mouth shirt. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of the things that made me very, very happy and uh, made Strider very, very miserable was uh, getting Lutris as a flatback to be a one button install from Discover on the Steam Deck. You know, it's... I've installed Lutris on my Steam Deck and I have not installed a single Lutris game. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people just. They sign into uh, the Epic Game Store via Lutris, and all of a sudden they have access to all the free games that they've been getting. Or, uh, they can or do the same for GOG, for Edge, for whatever. And all of the games are there, and most of them are just going to work by just installing them. Yeah, so gotta, gotta, gotta lower the barrier for entry. That's yeah, that's and it's all done via the GUI. If you put, if, if you force the kind of people <laughs> who just buy the handheld game console to go through the command line to do any of that. Could you imagine forcing people to <laughs> on a handheld console to use the fucking command line? That's that's how you kill a product, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh. it's for Steam. I mean... Steam CMD, baby. <laughs> oh, it's the Steam Cyberdeck. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can SSH into your fucking Steam Deck kids. You can. <laughs> yeah. right. Try that with a Switch. Um, no, it's one of the things I had somebody ask me earlier this week. They were like, hey, I'm having problems with this Hollow Knight thing. And I'm like, here's a fucking screenshot. I just did it right quick because you gave me a little panic attack. I'm like, what? Is it fucked up? I'm like, nope, it works. And he's like, no, I'm in on Steam Deck. <laughs> No, my okay. immediate my immediate thought was like that sounds like a personal problem, doesn't it? Um, but I, you know, I, I was uh, you know uh, diplomatic. What I said, as with many many other applications, there may be additional steps required in order for this to function on a Steam Deck. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much 
And any, mean, any sort of like mod manager stuff you would need. Well, I mean, this is like one of the advantages of like, so is this harder to do on the desktop? You know, insert thing up like, oh, fuck, no, it's way easier. Come on, let's install Linux on the desktop. Well, like, and you get stuff like SDK, Steam Tinker Tool, that uh, makes that kind of stuff mm-hmm. really easy in, uh, in GUI as well, especially uh, for like a handheld optimized UI. Mm. Yeah, uh, and the, the, they've been actively targeting the deck for uh, SDK specifically. So, yeah, it, use it. Buy more Steam decks. <laughs> Consume! And, you know, to the, to the very root of this, there's a reason Valve chose Arch for the Steam deck. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a good they, they, operating they, they, system. It's got good yeah. bones in it. Yeah, they, they were on Debian. They decided to move to Arch. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, imagine this Walterverse we could have had if, like, uh, Canonical just didn't pull the fuck you because... <laughs> yeah. Canonic- like, oh, no, no, we'll stick with 32-bit. <laughs> th- th- that was... Canonical got... Uh, Tried oh, to dude. step up to Valve. I'm like, yeah, we're dropping 32 bit. And Valve's like, we weren't informed of that. And they're like, yeah, we're doing it anyway. And Valve's like, see ya. Well, we're going to start looking at other operating systems now. <laughs> and all, all, all the Debian developers were like, you assholes, you took away our free games. <laughs> Man. Uh, so if you got a different operating system, whatever you run, let us know about it. And uh, what are the challenges? that you uh what's the you know what what's the oldest box you have running right now and what do you need to what what kind of challenges do you have in keeping that up to date or keeping that up and running oldest yeah linux machine 2003 um t43 thinkpad oldest oldest current running install i i got wait do i do i get to cheat because i got Uh, these fucking dell 3010s that you motherfuckers are on that counts. Yeah, these things are like <laughs> fourteen years old. But yeah, uh, no, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not. That's T43. not the. Uh, it's not the <laughs> oldest install you have, though. Like, oh, you mean from you, like original install? Yeah, like oh. yeah, like a a, a a machine you like set up like ten years ago or whatever. That's still running. That's still running the same OS. You maybe, I think maybe I you, that kind of bullshit. I well, I, I want I want the fucking viewers sending some hate mail. That's what I, I mean. Want. Yes, if you enjoy the challenge of doing such an awesome activity, such as maintaining a long running Linux distribution for multiple years, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a voicemail, which you can yeah. do uh, <laughs> on Spotify. Before we get out of here, a couple of quick plugs. We want to thank everybody who is supporting us on Patreon. You make the show possible. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Go check that out. No, it could be a little bit of pain in the ass if you're not one, but, you know, turn around, you see everybody in chat, see everybody in Discord. We move that conversation. Since it's a live stream, this party doesn't stop. We're over there, but just still doing our thing. Great group of people. But not only do you support us, we give you a couple of things back in your direction. You get this show in podcast format, and you can't make the live shows, but you want to have that experience, done. Video format, live show, done. You get it a week early. We make that available publicly if you want to follow us on our Uncut channel a week later. Just kind of spice things up. Speaking of our Discord, you get the pre-pre-super shows, and so if you want to hear us before we go live, talking about... Microwaves. <laughs> microwave, yeah, toy microwaves that people thought were real and leaving horrible reviews. We, hell, we thought they were real. Up until <laughs> right, oh, we did, we did. Fair enough. We got Humble Affiliate Links, basically all this stuff. I tried to cut down on uh, the spiel, so here, we're just going to go to support. That's where I want you to go. If you like what we do, we make you smile, give you a laugh. And we try to put everything to good use. And we find out, we answer questions. I'm currently answering a question of like, how does AJA work with OBS? Because no one else on the internet wants to know that, but I do. Amazon wish list. Jordan has one. Joe has one. Pedro has one. I got one for the studio. Fair warning. You end up back on the wall back there. And I will shame you if you get me anything. But you do get to send in a note. That's cool. We got a store. Get some merch like Frank. Check him out. Mm. With his Obey shirt. And uh, we do have an Amazon storefront as well. Dude. A- A- Amazon, Amazon thinks thinks we cheap. Oh, yeah, Amazon. Am- I get an email from Amazon because I'm part of the because uh, we got that Amazon store and like Amazon's you're a creator on Amazon. I'm like, bitch, I don't think so. But all right, whatever. <laughs> we get this. I, I get an email from Amazon that says, check this out. We're going to give you up to fifty thousand dollars. In $25 increments. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm, like, I'm not good at maths, but that, that'll take a minute. What do I, what, what I got to do? For every video you make featuring an Amazon product, we may give you $25. <laughs> I, 
Like, I'm not trying to sound a little pretentious, but I'm not even cutting the lights on in this room for $25. So I, the reason I'm bringing that up, maybe you don't want to rely on um, Amazon video reviews for products. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Yeah, the, them some cheap review. <laughs> Twenty five dollars. That, well, that's how you get people to buy an eighty dollar toy microwave. <laughs> it's totally not a toy, you guys. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm not about buying that and making a review for it, but for like, I don't know what is the most ridiculous use we can think of for a toy microwave. Uh how far can we shoot it out of a cannon? <laughs> If we if we run it over, how, how, what what is the minimum size vehicle you can run it over with before it breaks? <laughs> no, no, uh, you need something to hold on like a specific part of your shed in your backyard, and it, that has the perfect size. Oh, how long does it actually last in an actual microwave? <laughs> oh, or now see, see see that's getting too deep into the YouTube territory. There uh, hmm. is it machine washable. <laughs> Can can we get the ten thousand degree knife? Try to cut it in half. <laughs> the red hot nickel ball. <laughs> Versus oh Amazon yeah, yeah, the, the, the the fucking hydraulic press. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe that's a horrible idea. All right. Thanks for doing what you do. We appreciate your support. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all the fun things, and uh, we'll be back again next week. But until then. Um, we're going to cue the music. You can always get a hold to all of us. We're, we're doing things. We're online. Come say hi in our Discord. We keep plugging that because that's where we are. We talk in there all week long, having this random discussions all over the place. Uh, sometimes it's even Linux gaming related. Who knows? But I'm still on the Twitter. I mean, Zitter. Z-I-T-T-E-R. I don't, do not go there. I have no idea what's there. I'm, that's on you. It's one of those uh, fetish websites that pops it. Probably, probably man. <laughs> Uh, Vin's still in there and um, just at Vin on our federated timeline mass.linuxgamecast.com I'm Jordan if you like red hot nickel balls you should check out my uh, suck on my red <laughs> yeah. hot nickel ball put them in I'm, I'm Projo at mass.linuxgamecast.com I'm also on X Twitter X, straight edge till I die at the burning pool I am no longer on X, but you can find me on Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. I am at and accounted for with the actual number four, because there isn't some uh, asshole squatter I mean, that I hasn't logged in for like six years. I uh, <laughs> underscore the real Pedro Matias. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some credits. Well, we can be wrong and annoying. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> The two are not mutually exclusive. Yes. <laughs> well, it's time once again to, to table ret- spoon of retreat into deep space with our advisors Omega and Theron and our executive producers Brabram, Scott, Mashad, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Drummer, Tomash, Hakim, David, Eship, and Ian. I'm going to well, speed these up to the point where you're not going to be able to read them. Ah, little <laughs> Rino, Rex, Mac, and a Trudgy Verse, and Justin, Nub, and Darkwing System, T, Dancing Joe. Ogi One and Kyrilla, Nova Basil Chad, Romeo Marson, Renee, Leonardo DeCresny, Kim, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2 Dot Watch, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Very Tiny, Xanthorus Gaming, Rue Turnover, Oil of Hope, Jalu, Piper, Whoa. and Aromatic Dev. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just going to ask for this list in text format instead of trying to read it off Fuck, the No, video. it takes all the support out of it. Uh, all of our <laughs> fine upstanding animals helping us put together the studio. Carl, Micro, Theor, and Linux, Nero, Aldi, Snockless, Johnny, Shep, Gametron, you know it, DS, and Joe. Aromatic Dev, and of course, Kai. Kai. Back to the black inky void of space we go. <laughs> We're not Guar. We're nowhere near Guar. Well, you should have took a left. I fucking told you. Damn. Should have took that left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> at Guarbuquerque. Space Albuquerque. <laughs> Guarbuquerque. Dying to fire everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Five dudes.